is my new, this is my Popeye invention. It's a new type of time machine. Okay, now I'm going to start the engine slowly. And now I'm going to push a button. And again. And again. And again. And again. Okay, and now we're going to put speed up the engine. And now we're going to put speed up the engine. Yes, turn it all the way. All the way. Huh? This is at full speed. Okay, and now we're going to push the button many times. And now we're going to push the button a really good time. Perfect. Bye bye guys. Okay, now you will be asking yourself how this can work. If you are an engineer, then you will have been taught about involute gearing. Basically, choose the standard pressure angle, use the formula and the tables, and if you really must, consider something like profile shifting. And most importantly, the formula for the involute curve is a mathematical death trap, so keep to the safe path. Okay, so I exaggerated a bit, but you get the gist. But I'm not an engineer. I'm a scientist, and scientists never take the safe path. If something is unknown, they want to know. And if there's an established view, then it must be checked. So I approach gearing in the scientific way, basically asking a lot of why questions. And the first thing I discovered is that the engineering approach is very much a practical approach steeped in history. For example, the standard pressure angle is so important because the same machine could then be used to make all the gears. That saved a lot of money and was there for a good idea at the time. But the scientific approach is radically different. In science the aim is to understand everything, and practical considerations are not really considered. And a generally established view that is so steeped in history that is almost sacred is simply unresistible to a scientist. That said, most gears are involute gears, and the formula for the involute curve is a mathematical nightmare. But luckily I'm a biologist, and biologists have a habit of finding ways around difficult maths. They are trained to see an awful lot of information and then to filter out all that is not needed. And the involute curve does have a lot of very interesting characteristics. It seems like there is a deeper truth that is yet to be uncovered. So I asked myself what the core of gearing actually is. And the answer is how the teeth of the intermeshing gears interact with each other. And this is therefore all about the shape of the teeth. So my next question was how an infinitely long tooth would intermesh with another infinitely long tooth. And the answer is that it's two involute curves sliding over each other. So this involute curve is really important, but is there a way of avoiding that horrid formula? So I experimented with involute curves by creating gears in my computer. And what I found is that in order to draw a perfect intermeshing gear, I had to adjust the position where the involute curve started on the gear. And that you could put the axis of the intermeshing gears further apart by increasing the pressure angle. So the pressure angle and the distance between the axis of the intermeshing gears are dependent on each other. So then I started playing around with this and I found that I could create a gear where one half of it had one more tooth than the other half, but where both halves could still intermesh with another gear at the same distance between the axes. I call this a multi-ratio gear, and as it turns, the gear ratio continuously switches back and forth. This is great, as the big problem with all multi-speed transmissions is how to change from one gear ratio to the next. And my multi-ratio gear does exactly this without any problem. So this is a key finding for building a better transmission. But the transmission also needs to be able to remain at the same gear ratio, which is something my multi-ratio gear cannot do. However, the answer is simple. 
Simply sandwich the multi ratio gear in between two normal gears. If these gears both mirror an alternate half of the multi ratio gear, then an intermeshing gear can simply slide between the different gears by moving vertically at the right time. The multi ratio gear functioning as an intermediate stage between these two normal gears. Perfect. We now have a very simple multi speed transmission. However, the ratio difference between the two normal gears would only be created by two extra teeth. And that's not of great use. A solution could be to make a whole stack of these gears, but then you have another problem. We created a multi ratio gear by manipulating the pressure angle, and this trick is limited to three extra teeth at the most. So the gears in the stack cannot all intermesh with a secondary gear at the same distance between the axes. So instead, the distance between the axes needs to change while the secondary gears move vertically from gear to gear. This is only possible if we create gears that intermesh with another gear at different distances between the axes, depending on the vertical height on the gear. Luckily, we can create these gears with our trick of changing the pressure angle. At first, I believed that I also invented these gears, but it turned out that they already existed, and that they are called conical involute gears, and sometimes referred to as bevloid or tapered gears. They are hardly ever used, especially with parallel axes as I use them. The literature about them wasn't very clear, so I tried to understand them in the scientific way. And then I found something really interesting. These gears are inherently three-dimensional, and in three dimensions the involute curves all form straight lines that just touch the side of a cylinder. So reversing this thought, I found that a straight line circling upwards around the cylinder creates the involute tooth shape of the conical involute gears. And it turns out that varying the pressure angle in two-dimensional gears is no more than varying the vertical height in one of these conical involute gears. The two-dimensional cross-section of a conical involute gear is equal to a normal two-dimensional gear, whereby the height of the cross-section determines the pressure angle. Great, so our trick for creating the multi-ratio gears of varying the pressure angle is the same trick for creating the conical involute gears that we need, so we can combine the two and solve the problem. This, in short, is how the invention works and how it came about. If you want to know more, please check out the website newcvt.com. And please give this video a like. My daughter and I would really appreciate that. Thank you for watching this video.